Welcome back. Now, among the few billion-dollar companies within the Tata Group uh, is a somewhat lesser-known Tata Communications, uh, which binds the world through its networking prowess. I'm told more than 24% of the world's internet routes are on uh, the Tata Communications network. So how do you position a B2B brand today and harness uh, innovation and innovators in uh, what is really the rapidly evolving world of technology? So let's talk about this and more. Julie Woods Moss, Chief Marketing Officer at Tata Communications and CEO of their Next Gen Business, is uh, joining us on the show. Great to have you with us. Hello, hi. How are you doing? Yes, it's great to have you in India. And uh, Julie, as far as um, Tata Communications is concerned, when you talk essentially about the B2B business uh, and how you position it right now, there has been a sense of evolution, hasn't there been? I mean, over a period of time, we've seen B2B businesses not really bother so much about uh, the larger landscape, right? But that is changing right now. There is this humanizing that's happening. So before you tell me that, why don't you tell me a little bit about the business as it stands and how uh, Tata Communications business has evolved over a period of time since you've been around? Well, we actually talk about the consumerization of the enterprise. If you think if you're a CIO or CMO, you now expect the same mobile apps, um, you know, agility in your corporate IT as you do in your home life. So it's almost been a reverse um, sort of uh, impetus from social back into the enterprise. And, you know, the industry calls that, uh, it's quite unappealing, but they, we call it SMAC. Smack. <laughs> social, mobile, analytics, right. um, and cloud. It's blown up expectations and crunched up, you know, pressure to deliver in terms of enterprise expectations. Um, so part of what we have to do is ensure that the brand doesn't get too far ahead of the ability of the CIO to, to deliver. So that's a nice balancing act. In terms of uh, Tata Communications, um, we're, you know, I'm delighted to say we're growing. Um, we're now 75% of our business is outside the, uh, of India. Yes. We're doing the right things, but boy, we're just on the start of the journey. Yeah, so this is uh, at a very nascent stage that you find yourselves in. So my in interest, of course, would be from the brand positioning side of sure. it and how you're reaching out to your potential clients. Uh, our unifying idea is we're the connection. So we don't always have to be the, you know, the brand, you know, in front of you, but actually what we do with our, you know, our critical role in the internet and cloud economy, we actually are the connection that, you know, enables value across right. the whole ecosystem. Right. Having said that, if that is the premise that you work in, how do you communicate what you really stand for to uh, people beyond your clients? Even, are you even trying to do that? Because I'm seeing a lot more B2B businesses mm -hmm. trying to reach out, create a brand image uh, that goes uh, beyond reaching out to clients. Well, we're uh, clearly with a B2B brand, you have to be more focused than B2C because we, you know, you, you, uh, you're more sort of vulnerable to brand leakage. The CIOs I work with are influenced by their kids. You know, they're influenced by the people they meet in the golf club or the cricket club. And so we have to, be th we have to think of our challenge still as business to human. Um, we can't think we're, you know, we're, we're marketing to cold, co you know, company structures. Yes. And that's been really quite a dramatic shift. So I try and encourage my team to humanize the message. Um, so when we, uh, we've, we've just launched some new services uh, a year ago, and uh, you mentioned our prowess in terms of the internet. Yes. And so we, we decided to really humanize that. And we got kids to talk about where does the internet come from. Yes, um, that was part of the yeah, uh, campaign uh, that you ran. And actually, it was really crazy because even you know veteran industry people it made them think, um, and it really humanized the topic. And I could go to dinner parties and talk in a human way about what I do mm -hmm. and also inform and intrigue. So that was a really successful digital campaign, a great example of how we humanize the message. How do you see that in some of your campaigns? Because uh, like for a Heathrow Express, sure. you had the entire train shrouded in uh, the branding of uh, Tata Communications. Uh, this is the train that essentially connects uh, Paddington with Heathrow Airport. Yep. and Heathrow everybody Airport. uses it. Absolutely. <laughs> we went for the Heathrow Express because of the propensity of business travelers. So 18 million business people a year use it. And that's almost 70% of the total passengers. So for me, it was a very powerful platform. Mm -hmm. But again, we humanized the message. We talked about, um, you know, India's Team Indus and, this, and the space mission. We talked about um, things that, you know, we, we talked about, you know, so many seconds between Hong Kong and Heathrow. So things that were more human. And 
on the back of that, we have actually started on this new journey of co-branding with our customers. Mm -hmm. And boy, have we struck gold because some of the most powerful brands in the world are already alongside us. Um, so, for example, I'm doing co-branding with Google. Right. And you may have seen that. Um, yes. It, we talk about networks at the speed of Google and Tata Communications is, you know, we're the connection. You're talking about co-branding over here. So I'm seeing that in Formula One with uh, Mercedes as well, the team. Uh, the Mercedes, the AMG Petronas, yep, uh, the world champions. Formula One team, and you've been associated with that in the past. So is that the broader context to work in? Uh, Co-branding, like you said, is it really bringing in the dividends? Well, as a challenger, um, it's wonderful to share an experience. And what Formula One gives me, which is sort of the story behind the story, it, I have a, um, a mobile showcase that goes to 40 of the most premier uh, places in the world every year. And for so many days, I can uh, take a CIO or CEO and say, these are my services and actions. That, but you what know, about the innovation part of it, mm -hmm. uh, Julie? Because that's something that I'm hearing a lot about. Uh, when you're reaching out to the startup community and innovation and innovators is uh, the kind of ecosystem that you're trying to kind of harness the potential of, uh, is this a marketing move really? Or is there a huge business waiting to be tapped? For sure, the startup move is creating real value. We are really encouraging how we work with startups, and we've got a, a program that we call Shape the Future, mm -hmm. and that works at multi-levels. We have an entrepreneurship, so you can give up your job and pursue a dream, but stay on the payroll. You know, uh, we have, um, we've invested in a fund um, that actually does scouting for us. Um, we're, we're at any time, you know, looking at about 20 startups and seeing how we can work with them or invest in them. Sure. And we've done some investments in artificial intelligence and, um, and that whole piece and big data. So I think, you, you know, there's no secret source with startups. The odds are the odds. Instead of seeing, like, companies in that category as a threat, mm -hmm. we see them as actually creating market. Right. And if we can have a piece of the pie, yes. And, you know, and some of the brand value, right. uh, then that's, that's... Here we were talking about being able to reach out to as many people. The market is huge in India. The possibilities are enormous. But at the same time, connectivity issues are still sure. very, very strong. And, uh, you know, to break away from those, that seems to be a huge hurdle right now. With Facebook introducing face, uh, free basics sure. and then having to withdraw, how much of that do you see as a setback, really, in the entire drive towards getting more people on board and getting them on the Internet and, you know, getting a bigger market to be able to work in? Well, in India, we're the leader, but we are also passionate about digital inclusion. And digital inclusion has to be married with financial inclusion. Our network goes quite deep into India. And from the edge of our network, we can probably find a way to get to the next 100 million rural um, but beyond in, that... In, in the existing context? Well, with some innovation, the industry needs to collaborate more on digital inclusion. You, this one, I think, is so right, big, right. we need a, a number of paths. And uh, the number of paths is something that you are tracking very closely, and you are attacking them as uh, quickly as possible. That's what we've noticed so far in the run-up to uh, the point that we find ourselves at. Uh, great going so far at Tata Communications. Julie, what a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you.